The doctor. Now just how exactly are you supposed to deal with this guy? He makes you scream and reveal your location, shocks you so you can't vault or use pallets, and completely removes your ability to heal, use items, and repair generators. On top of that, he has a bunch of add-ons that can wildly change up his playstyle, so you're never quite sure of what to expect until you've already been driven mad. The Doctor's power is pretty complex compared to other killers, and if you're hoping to survive against him, knowing how it works is crucial. He has both a passive static field effect that builds madness faster the closer you are to him, and his shock therapy attack which disables important actions like vaulting and dropping pallets for survivors. Each tier of madness causes different effects, and the add-ons he picks can alter them as well. Tier 1 Madness is pretty simple. You just scream once, and that's it. <laughs> for Tier 2 Madness, be on the lookout for the following things. Hallucinations that don't disappear quickly will stare in your direction and give your position away to the doctor. The heartbeat sound and red stain could appear as if he's right behind you. and illusory pallets may appear where pallets have been broken and can lure you into a false sense of security. Tier 3 Madness causes you to scream periodically and prevents you from using items, repairing generators, healing, or sabotaging until you snap out of it. Tier 3 Madness also always reveals your location to the doctor when a hallucination appears, so if you're snapping out of it when one spawns, it's usually a good idea to move to another location. So that covers most of the doctor's mechanics, but what can you actually do against them? First, understand that screaming doesn't always mean the doctor is going to find you. The doctor has three other survivors to deal with, generator to patrol, and madness to rank up. As you'll see in this clip, I purposely run into the doctor's static field to get madness 1. This immediately causes me to scream, but I'm fairly confident he won't chase after me because he has one of my teammates cornered. A good strategy is to get Madness 1 as soon as possible if the doctor is chasing another survivor. Also, because my Madness gauge is low, I'm able to remain in his static field without giving myself away and revive my teammate when I see the opportunity. If you can't afford to scream because you're injured or the doctor is nearby, hiding in a locker or equipping the Calm Spirit perk will prevent you from screaming. Keep in mind that he can still find you using his hallucinations, so never stay in one place for too long. Next is dealing with his shock therapy. A good doctor can end chases very quickly by denying pallet drops. As you can see in this clip, Dwight should have thrown down that first pallet and forced me to break it, but instead went for the second pallet where I prevented him from dropping it and he took a hit. In this clip, you'll see a scenario where the survivor should not have dropped a pallet. If Adam had kept running, he could have stalled long enough for my shock to wear off and drop the pallet after, but he winds up trapping himself instead and gets downed. And this clip shows the worst position any survivor can find themselves in. When there's only a short wall separating both sides of the pallet, the doctor can stand in the middle and shock both sides, so no matter what the survivor does, they're forced to take a hit. She should have dropped the pallet and kept running, rather than try to make use of an unsafe pallet. So to prevent winding up in these scenarios, you'll need to consider two things. How close is the doctor to you, and whether or not you can reach the window or pallet before his shock lands. If you know his shock is going to hit you first, you need to find another route immediately. Sometimes he'll shock you, but he won't be close enough to hit you before his shock wears off. In these cases, you can loop him normally until he gains distance on you. Now to counter the Doctor in a general gameplay sense, the most important thing is to complete the map's middle generator first. The Doctor relies on keeping survivors in high levels of madness to help slow generator progression. If the middle generator hasn't been prepared yet, it allows him to keep more survivors in his terror radius with less effort. A good doctor will prioritize protecting the middle generator, so you may need to apply pressure on another area of the map first to lure him away from it.
Another strategy is to use his power against him. Unlike other killers where you don't always know where they are, the fact that the doctor is constantly forcing your teammates to scream should make it fairly obvious what area of the map he's in. You can use this information to rotate to a generator outside of the doctor's static field. As you can see in this clip, I used the scream notifications to pinpoint where the doctor was and began working on a generator safely outside his terror radius. Finally, do your best to stay in Madness 1 for as long as possible. Madness 2 is the tier where the doctor gains his hallucinations, and Madness 3 is impossible to escape from, unless one of your teammates can distract the doctor long enough for you to snap out of it. You can reduce your madness level by waiting outside his terror radius, and keep it low by working on generators far away from him and hiding in lockers when he's nearby. So thanks for watching, if you found this video helpful make sure to subscribe for future content. Nice and hot, hot and spicy meat. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs>